All right, eighth graders and parents, guardians, if you are watching this video, the information here is just to go over the scheduling documents that were shared with students. They have all received a folder called 2018-19 All Scheduling Documents. In this folder, there is the calendar which shows what the counselors will be doing for scheduling this year. You'll see the first week on the calendar is the week of MLK Junior Day where we are going to the middle school Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll be in the, actually it's not going to be the library, it should be the band room I believe this year from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. to answer questions. If you'd like to come with your student, if you have anything you need from us, we'll be there. And then we've scheduled for Friday to be back at the middle school where we're gonna be sitting down with every student one-on-one -on -one for about five minutes going over their signed green schedule. Um, so this is the, you know, the first week we just dedicate kind of to the middle school where we are specifically working with eighth graders on getting questions answered, information out to them, and then filling out the sheet for scheduling for next year. There is also a couple of other just interesting pieces of information in here. The curriculum guide is a great tool for a lot of things. Um, for starters, the first oh, 18 pages is a list of courses we offer, um, required courses and elective courses within each department. So it should be alphabetized by department. Um, every course is listed in here that we offer. If you want to read anything else about those classes, this would be a place to go to find that information. Once you get to about page 20, there is just some other information we share in here. So college and career planning, selection of courses, schedule changes, that's going to be right here. Course load and attendance information if it comes to potentially graduating early and kind of the caseload, the course load that students carry information on Central 9 if you want to look anything up for, for that program, non-discrimination policy, different academic opportunities that are available at the high school. And then on page 20, 19, I guess it is, um, we've got the Core 40 requirements as well as the academic honors and technical honor diploma requirements. So at Beach Grove High School, students are enrolled for about 16 credits per school year which means at the end of four years, they could have earned up to 64 or more credits. For the core 40, the minimum requirement is 40 credits, including eight credits in English, six credits in math that must include Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2, six credits in science that must include Biology, two credits of a Physical Science, two additional core 40 approved science courses. And if you look in the curriculum guide in the science department, that's all clarified there, which courses qualify for the core 40 sciences. Six credits in social studies where students must earn U.S. history, U.S. government, economics, and world history. And then directed electives. It says five credits, but that's just to get you to 40. Um, we've recently changed away from the 55 rule and said that each student must opt in and kind of select a pathway each school year, match some of their directed elective courses with what their current interests are. So freshmen take preparing for college and careers and consumer economics. Sophomores take career information and exploration. And then we do have conversations each year with students to choose classes that directly relate to their interests. So those directed electives are conversations that we'll be having with students each year. The state requires that directed electives come from certain categories, and some of those categories include world language, fine arts, and career and tech ed, but we also have a lot more to offer at Beach Grove High School. Students will be required to take at least two credits of PE, at least one credit of health and wellness, or if the student opts to not take health, which we offer online, they can take three family and consumer science credits, including preparing for college and careers in consumer economics that freshmen take anyway, so it could be as simple as picking up one more family and consumer science credit. And then again, the other fillers are called electives. So um, once a student reaches 40 credits, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good to go and they can just graduate. However, at Beach Grove High School, we offer a ton of opportunities and electives each year. So most of our students graduate with well over 40 credits. The academic honors diploma additions are, you must maintain a 3.0 throughout high school you have 3.0 GPA throughout high school. You have to earn an additional two core 40 math credits. So on top of algebra, geometry, and algebra two, you'd have to earn two additional math credits. You have to earn six to eight 
world language credits. So you could take two years of French, two years of Spanish. That would be your four fulfillment, or you could take three years of the same language. You have to earn two credits in fine arts. You also have to have a C minus or higher in all of your core classes. So all of these classes over here in core 40, plus your math and world languages, as well as your dual credit or AP classes, all of those need to have a C minus or higher on your transcript. Technical honors is going to be for a student who maintains a 3.0 as well as a C minus or higher in all classes and completes a pathway through a technical program like C9. There's also information on college athletic eligibility through NCAA or NAIA. Um, Mrs. Shively, myself, I am one of the uh, like lead counselors that can communicate with you if you have questions about athletic eligibility, if that's something that you think your student will be pursuing is participating in sports in college. Beach Grove High School graduation requirements, which again, right here it says 55 total credits. That's no longer required. Um, the pathway options, the directed electives options, that's explained right here. Here's our grading scale. A four-year course plan, so students each year fill out a four-year course plan when they do their scheduling sheet. This year, your eighth grader's scheduling sheet is a green scheduling sheet, so hopefully you'll be seeing that soon. Community service requirement, current clubs and organizations. Naviance is a tool that will be utilized at the high school, so this explains that a little bit. And then at the end, there are some different pathways that we've asked students to kind of opt into, and it kind of gives some different ideas of jobs that are available depending on your education level when you've completed high school. So this is the curriculum guide. It's in the folder that students have. There's also the course code sheet that shows all of our current classes and the course codes that apply to those. C9 programs. Courses that have prerequisites. So um, for freshmen, that's really not something they need to worry about unless maybe in the music program. But as they get older and are choosing electives, they might need to reference this sheet to determine if they are qualified to take a class that they're interested in taking. Again, we've looked at the schedule. And then our math department, science department, put out offerings and sequences that show what class order you could potentially take depending on your plan. Um, so after high school, are you planning on going into a four-year degree with calculus needed? And, and these are questions that counselors can help answer, but it does give a sequence of math classes that would fit your post-high school plans, and the same thing for science. So those are the generic documents that apply to all students. And then in the current eighth grade folder, there is a newsletter shared specifically with freshmen that gives information. Um, just for you to read over and kind of be familiar with. We'll go over this a little bit when we do the classroom lessons at the middle school. It just sort of gives dates, um, names, email addresses, specific high school individuals and terms that you might need to, to know, hopefully to get familiar with before next year when you start ninth grade. There's also a letter to parents and guardians with information about upcoming planning for scheduling, which does include um, middle school visit to the high school before the end of the school year. That date has not been selected, but it, it should be after I-STEP, so probably in May. And then a copy of the scheduling sheet. So every student will be sent home with one of these two-sided documents. It should be green. We need them to fill that out, look over it with you, get a parent signature on here, and then um, this box is what classes they're wanting to take as a freshman. The four-year course plan just asks them to jot down the classes they believe they're going to be taking as 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. So if you have any questions, you can find your counselor's um, name and email address on here. If you would like to reach out um, throughout this week or any time before the end of the school year, that'd be the best way to get a hold of the counselor is just looking up the email and sending that out. Please feel free to join us Thursday, February, I'm sorry, Thursday, January 18th from 3.30 to 6.30 at Beach Grove Middle School. If you would like to come in and have any um, answers question, question answered or go over the scheduling sheet, we should be there to help you with that. Thanks for watching.